A quick preamble before we begin, this next video is a Christmas gift for my favorite blue dragon boyfriend, Draconic. I know for a fact he's gonna enjoy this one, like I just, I'm just deeply aware how much he loves spider riders, so, uh, hope you enjoy, sweetie. Love you. Have a Merry Christmas when it rolls around. Spider Riders takes place in a world hidden within our own, where a chosen few knights called Spider Riders must, well, ride really cool mechanical spiders, and stop evil insectoid villains from enacting their shadowy schemes. It's effectively an isekai, but honestly, because the premise is so detached from the on-screen action and it thrusts right into the action so swiftly, you can't really get a sense for what the stakes are, who anyone is, or why you should care. And that's a shame, because buried deep in this goofy Saturday morning cartoon, there are occasionally some genuinely poignant themes or nuggets of intrigue. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a misunderstood masterpiece or that you should binge watch the whole thing. The exposition is laughably blatant, the characters are one-dimensional and unrealistic, and the voice acting is so distracting that it actively breaks immersion. So this is the Hill of Champions. Bug off! You're not welcome here. I'll introduce myself. I'm Buggies. Oh, Buggies. <gasps> so, you are Buggies. But in spite of all that, Spider Riders sometimes explores psychological and philosophical concepts often left ignored by other children's media. Today, we'll be looking at one such example. Episode 5, Memories of Champions. In this episode, our protagonist Hunter Steel travels to the Hill of Champions. The hill represents the prior generation of spider riders, and their duty to protect the inner world, as well as the sacrifices they made for us all. To get you up to speed on Hunter, he's impatient, reckless, and stereotypically boyish, as protagonists in these shows tend to be. Anyway, he's excited to see this invaluable monument. And for what it's worth, it's handled with surprising gravitas. The idea is that, by looking into the past to see why the Spider Riders formed and fought for justice, he'll mature and grow out of his more childish ideals surrounding heroism. It's actually possible to be immersed in the situation and feel the weight of this world's history, up until the terrible voice acting interrupts the mood again. Hey Hunter! Have you noticed that this whole area is a complete wasteland? Well, yeah. We learned that the Hill of Champions was once surrounded by lush forest, but was brought to ruin by the might of the evil infected army. It took the first Spider Rider everything he had to push back the enemies. A bond was forged there and then between Spider and Man, and a pact made to protect world peace at any cost. The story of the first Spider Riders, it really makes you think. There is only one caretaker still watching after the Hill of Champions, Galena. She's a rather morose individual, passive-aggressive, blunt, and a bit depressed. She strikes right to Hunter's core upon meeting him, criticizing his foolish bravado. She seems outright antagonistic, but we soon learn her motivations. Galena's missing husband was himself a spider rider, with a rather similar personality to Hunter. Understandably, Galena feels a responsibility not only to protect Hunter from the same fate, but to tend to the Hill of Champions, the place where she first met her one true love. The small garden she grows here represents her last ray of hope. She desperately wishes to believe her husband is not simply dead, but only lost, that someday he'll return from his duty as a spider rider and greet her with a warm smile. It's an unwillingness to let go of the past, but also a symbol of respect for the love they once held. Galena is tired, and Hunter's idealistic, bold spirit is painful to her. She has little fire left. So little fire that when a villain approaches, threatening to destroy her garden, she readily surrenders it. It's not as though she truly wants to give up hope, but if it means sparing Hunter danger and preventing more bloodshed, she'll let it fade. Of course, this doesn't sit well with our hero, and he must fight to protect this sacred site. In doing so, he demonstrates the value in hope, and that, even when it hurts, we must trust that the quest for peace is worth the risk. The episode actually has a lot to say here. 
It teaches us the power of symbolism, how the things we fight for are often as idealistic as they are literal, and that there's far more subtlety to a person's behaviors and beliefs than we might initially realize. The tragedy in all this, of course, is that it's part of a rather bad show. For as much as some writer out there truly, truly cared about communicating complex ideas to children with heartfelt sincerity, it's all wrapped up in a tone-deaf, awkward, poorly paced package. But all the same, I saw the love in here, and that's why I made this video.